Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, and we've got some news. This came uh, just before, or just as, I was uh, getting settled in to play my uh, my little RPG session tonight. So I figured after the session, I'd roll with, literally roll with it, and there's a pun involved in there. Dungeon Master's Guild... That's the uh, Dungeon Masters Guild on one bookshelf. Strange how they're in the news again today. Announced his partnership with Roll20. What does this mean? Well, Dungeon Masters Guild is one bookshelf slash Wizards of the Coast. Right? This is where you can play in the different worlds of Wizards. Uh, what they've opened up, you can use their otherwise locked down IP for your products within that specific environment. And now they announced a partnership with Roll20. Roll20 and One Bookshelf are pleased to announce they've reached an agreement to support Dungeon Masters Guild content officially on the Roll20 virtual tabletop. I got some thoughts on this. No inside information, but some thoughts. Uh, Dungeon Masters Guild, DM's Guild, Creators will soon be able to create Roll20 content in the form of modules and add-ons. That will unlock for users with the purchase of their DM's Guild Adventure content, providing additional value for online play. Roll20 users will be able to access those maps and handouts available from DM's Guild in the virtual tabletop without additional setup work. At Roll20, we have seen passionate support for DM's Guild content from both our community and our creators. And we are thrilled to create a more seamless way to play that amazing catalog of content online while expanding the possibilities for DMs, guild players, and creators, said Emily Floyd, licensing director of Roll20. Okay. The Roll20 virtual tabletop provides a full suite of easy-to-use digital tools so players can build characters and run campaigns seamlessly through their web browser. With character sheet automation, simple click-to-roll attacks, and built-in video and voice communication, players can quickly craft stories as a group. Pre-made adventures and fully integrated beast areas allow GMs to run games with minimal setup, while enjoying features such as dynamic lighting and advanced fog of war to build tension on what's right around the corner or creeping up from behind. One Bookshelf, in partnership with Wizards of the Coast, launched DMs Guild in 2016 as a community content program that allows creators to make content using Wizards of the Coast properties. Our goal has always been to build a space for aspiring designers who love games as we do. DM's Guild was an extension of this philosophy, providing a new opportunity to the gaming community, and now we have a shared mission with Roll20 to open an even larger space where creators can distribute and profit from their work. Said Scott Holden, Director of Marketing and Public Publisher Relations at One Bookshelf. Details on how this program will work are still forthcoming. We've created an initial fax for expected questions from y'all. And once we learn more, we'll relay the information to you who can participate. Roll 20 creators to sell DMs Guild content on one bookshelf. One bookshelf creators who would like to start providing access to their DMs Guild content on Roll 20. What if I am not a current Roll 20 creator? Roll 20 will assist one bookshelf creators with onboarding. How will the unlock work? Unlock work in general. When a purchase is made on one bookshelf, the purchaser will be provided the means to unlock the converted content over on Roll Twenty. Will royalty splitting be honored? Yes. Do I need to do anything special as an existing Roll Twenty creator if I want to release DMs Guild content on Roll Twenty? We'll have more information as it develops. Now, I don't know if you all, you all, I'm talking like them now, right? I don't know if you all kind of remember the uh, survey that Wizards of the Coast put out where some people got questions on a possible VTT. Now, what happened before or recently, right? But the D&D Beyond is no longer its own entity, right? The D&D Belong is no longer a licensee. D&D Beyond is Wizards of the Coast now. It was bought out. Now they control that software. Now they are integrating DMs Guild into Roll20. I don't believe that one bookshelf is going to get bought out by 
Wizards of the Coast. I don't think they want that responsibility. Do I think it is possible that Roll20 could be an acquisition in the eh, not so near future to intermediate future? It's possible. Wizards of the Coast has, already has a bad history with trying to design and develop their own VTT. I think we had a, a homicide suicide involved in uh, the 4E VTT, along with, uh, I guess, like stolen animation from Fantasy Grounds and other wonderful stuff. It's a lot to build yours from the ground. What if you could already come in? I mean, half the games played on Roll20 are 5E games. It's basically asking for such, right? Now, I don't have any inside information. I am just saying this makes for a very good match, and this is an additional match that appears to be happening, right? They're already integrating DMs Guild into Roll20. I don't know. I do find it interesting. I will include a link to the original article so you can look at it and see if there's any updates on it. You can see it's from June 27th. Today is Monday, June 27th, 2022. So like I said, it was a timely piece of news. I wanted to get this into your hands. And it, strangely enough, one bookshelf happens to be the two uh, episodes that we have today. Now, <clears throat> doesn't mean that... Here, let me, uh, let me do away from this. The, look what I got. Yep, uh, the... The blue screen's doing away with it, but dungeon crawl. Um, I, it, 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 I don't know how. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how uh, TSR is making a profit on this box. It is a quality game box. I don't know if the game itself is quality. Um, judging from the rules that I've read, which refers to a character sheet that doesn't exist, I'm going to guess that the rules themselves are in quality, but the game components appear to be quality. I always give you know credit where credit is due. So for what you get and the quality of what you get, physically, I don't really know how much of a profit TSR can be making on this. It could be why nothing's shipping. It could be why people only get this at cons. It could be that the uh, stuff that was paid for, it's impossible to ship because they lose money on it. I don't know. Well, maybe more tomorrow, maybe more Wednesday. I believe tomorrow should certainly be uh, part two of the Ernie Guy Guys call. Hey, it's been a week, right? We got to get the next part. Other than that, folks, obviously we're still in the midst of the world of COVID. Ooh, sorry. Listen, we're all adults here, right? Or at least we're pretending to be role player of fucking adult. Um, use your common sense. All right, that's it. I'll leave it at that. Be safe, be well, God bless. Roll those dice, roll them well. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow with at least one, maybe uh, maybe two casts. We'll see. We'll see how much energy I got. My old man, Danny.